Acetyl-CoA is an important molecule used in cellular respiration. It is the second step in aerobic respiration after glycolysis. Acetyl-CoA is known as the universal intermediate because it is the product of oxidation from proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids, which can all be used to go into the Krebs cycle to make energy for ATP. At the Krebs cycle, the acetyl-CoA combines with two carbon atoms and creates the first enzyme of the cycle, citrate. Too much acetyl-CoA can be unhealthy because it can cause a rise in insulin levels, which can trigger another enzyme called HMG-CoA that raises the levels of cholesterol in the blood. Acetyl-CoA is most commonly created from the breakdown of carbs, fats, rather than proteins. Proteins are the building blocks of the body that are made up of amino acids. They are used to maintain and repair body tissues, but aren't normally used for muscle activity. Even though carbohydrates are our main source of fuel for exercise, Proteins can be used when we have an inadequate amount of carbs as prolonged exercise continues. In order for proteins to be converted into acetyl-CoA, they must go through the bioenergetic process. This happens when amino acids be begin to convert to pyruvate by being aerobically metabolized. The amino acids that are converted can be used to produce glucose, then are termed glucogen. Amino acids that are converted into acetyl-CoA, however, cannot be converted into glucose and must be metabolized. These can be metabolized directly by entering the Krebs cycle. The proteins that enter the Krebs cycle must be metabolized but cannot be used to use synthesize glucose. Only a small portion of protein that is metabolized can be used to produce energy for acetyl-CoA, which is why fatty acids kick in when as we perform exercise for a longer period of time. The breakdown of carbs starts with one glucose molecule being split into two three carbon molecules. Because oxygen is present, then the carbon molecules are each converted into pyruvate. Oxidative phosphorylation can begin where the pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA. Since there are two pyruvates, two acetyl-CoAs will be forming, which are converted into usable energy in the Krebs cycle. Now that you have some background information, let's jump into the actual stages of breaking down fatty acids through acetyl-CoA. Our first stage is mobilization, which consists of breaking down triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol, which is also known as lipolysis. Our next step is circulation, and this is where free fatty acids are being transported from adipose to muscle. Once the free fatty acids are transported, uptake occurs by free fatty acids entering into muscles from the blood. Now that there are free fatty acids are in the muscles, activation happens and this is where there's an increase in free fatty acid levels to prepare for catabolism. When activated free fatty acids enter the mitochondria, this process is called translocation. This is the final step is made oxidation. Fatty acids generate and store much more energy for their weight than their carbohydrates. These are highly more reduced than carbohydrates, which means they provide more energy during oxidation. At the end of each cycle of beta oxidation, one acetyl-CoA, two carbon unit, is released which continues to oxidize until it's completely converted into acetyl-CoA.